Genesis is the first of the five books that are called the Law of Moses. Genesis records the creation of animals by God. It says that he gave power to the seas to bring forth life forms uh, create, that would recreate, uh, reproduce after their own kind. He gave power to the earth to produce uh, life forms that would uh, reproduce after their own kind. But because uh, there is uh, 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 the uh, multiplicity of life forms that is also included, uh, God does not just uh, give uh, to the land and to the sea the power to uh, produce uh, life forms, but it, it produce it by implication. Uh, he's giving power to the life forms that are created, uh, the power to create new life forms after their own kind. I'm saying that if he hands off the... Um, the uh, job of creating life to the seas and to the earth. Uh, he's not just creating a life. He's, he's handing off also the uh, job of creating new life, uh, new life forms. And who would that go to? Uh, it wouldn't go to the earth, to the seas. It would, by implication, it would go to the life forms that are created first. In other words, uh, the, uh, it's not just creating after your own kind. It's creating after your own kind, but also uh, creating after uh, creating uh, new life forms. And they, in turn, would create after their own kind. And uh, so this is quite uh, similar to what the uh, evolution uh, scientists say uh, in terms of uh, natural creation. Natural selection, I should say. Uh, uh, Genesis 1 has uh, a God uh, ha um, empowering nature to create. And uh, in, uh, scientists uh, uh, have... Uh, 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 scientists have natural selection do the creating. Now, uh, it's basically selection by nature... So nature is, in both cases, Genesis 1 and in uh, evolution, uh, nature is doing the creating and uh, the, the coming forth, uh, bringing forth of new life forms. Then it says that God uh, created uh, man to uh, reproduce after his own kind. I want to emphasize that uh, uh, the, the implication is that God is um, producing after his own kind. He says, uh, it says, let us make man after our own image and likeness. So, so man is the offspring of God. And uh, he produces after his own kind. But um, this is Genesis 1, verse 26 through 28. Now, we can make a case that mankind is a collective son of God. Not that individual Men or women, not individuals, are the sons of God, but mankind collectively is the um, um, offspring of God, uh, singular, in the singular sense, not plural. Mankind is an organism made up of people instead of cells. People 
are the cells that make up the body called mankind. The superorganism um, of human society. I said all that to say this. For God to kill all mankind would be uh, like feticide, which means a mother killing her own offspring. So we must reject the Torah's account, uh, which is, I'm talking about Genesis, uh, Genesis 6. Um, the Torah's account of uh, Noah's flood. For, for Christians and Jews have a duty to um, uphold the reputation of God, God's character. Like it says in the Lord's Prayer, Hallowed be thy name, referring to God's name. Uh, it's, uh, God's name is holy and to be respected, to be revered, and by extension, so is his character. Like Abraham says in Genesis, uh, should not the judge of all the world do right, uh, uh, be righteous? When push comes to shove, we, we have to separate God from his word and put God above his word, above the Holy Bible. It's better to have a portion of the Bible put aside uh, rather than uh, to hold on to the whole Bible and um, there, thereby and thereby uh, make charges against God that uh, 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 that reflect uh, negatively as to his character. I'm talking about Noah's flood. It's better to put Noah's flood aside rather than to hold to its historicity and to accuse God of the mass killing of his uh, collective offspring uh, which, which together make up the, um, the single his single offspring, mankind. To hold on to a literal interpretation of the biblical account of Noah's flood is to uh, present to the world uh, an ogre, a monster, a cosmic likeness to the abortion Choosing woman. In a tempest-tossed sea, when the ship is about to go under because of the tremendous weight of the cargo, it only makes good sense to uh, jettison the cargo as a way of saving the ship. You throw the rice overboard so that this ship can be saved. The ship is worth much more than the cargo of rice. Likewise, God is worth much more than all the Bibles in the world. Finally, now is the right time to... Um, demythologize the flood of Noah's Noah's time. It's time to apply Acts 15 to Genesis 5 through 7, which is where the account of Noah's flood is found. Now why now in particular uh why now? Because only recently have we discovered the uh, true basis of the um, story 
of uh, Noah's flood and Noah's ark. Uh, I'm talking about the Black Sea flood of uh, 7,500 years ago, which means 5,500 B.C. What happened was water from the Mediterranean flooded into the Black Sea, which until that time was only half the size of what it is today. Uh, why would this water be coming into the Black Sea? Um, well, the Mediterranean Sea itself used to be much smaller than it is today. It was uh, more closed off. The entrance to the Mediterranean from the Atlantic was uh, much more narrow. Um, and the Rock of Gibraltar uh, somehow uh, served, uh, it blocked the, um, the uh, ocean. And uh, once the uh, water flooded the Mediterranean, uh, then it proceeded to, to um, flood uh, into the Black Sea. And it was uh, the, the northern part of what is now the Black Sea, the, the northern part, I uh, used to be land, dry land, and uh, that is the land that was um, uh, flooded. Now, Walter Pittman and William Ryan of Columbia University, uh, they uh, did some exploring uh, in the Black Sea, um, along with um, uh, Bob uh, Ballard, who was famous for uh, finding the remains of the Titanic. They explored the Black Sea and they found evidence of a northern coastline, uh, something like 390 feet below the surface, and it was uh, several hundred miles south of the present day uh, northern coastline. They were, were able to uh, date uh, this flood, like I say, to uh, like 5500 BC. Now that was back in the 90s, and since that time, uh, another um, um, researcher. Um, I read something, uh, a short article uh, about that, and they were talking about uh, 9,000 years ago. But let's just stick with the, uh, the 7,500 year ago uh, as the, uh, the age of the dating of the flood. Now, why would this particular local flood be the basis be uh, the natural choice as the historical basis for the flood of Noah's time. Why would I say that? Well, um, Noah's flood comes to us through the Bible, and the uh, uh, Bible comes to us um, through the person of uh, Moses, and before him it was Abraham. And Abraham came, comes, comes from Iraq, the city of Ur in Iraq. And uh, uh, all, that, uh, that the whole story, the uh, Genesis story, the Genesis creation story, uh, but particularly the uh, flood story, uh, can be tied to Iraq. Largely because of um, the Epic of Gilgamesh, and there's the, um, there's the Sumeritan account. Now, uh, Sumeria is uh, in the Iraq area, uh, within Iraq, the borders of Iraq. And I think there's another uh, one or two accounts that are separate, but they're all within the borders of Iraq. Now, um, Iraq, it turns out, 
is not that far east and south, southeast of the Black Sea. And the idea is the survivors of the Black Sea flood, they could go north or they could go west, but they could also go to the east. And if they go east and then south, they uh, come into um, uh, Iraq uh, after just a few hundred miles of travel. And if it wasn't uh, that particular generation, it would be their, their descendants that would come into Iraq. And they would carry the story of this flood. Of course, they would exaggerate it, and they would um, turn it into mythology. And uh, 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 maybe it was God's uh, uh, leading them to do so for the sake of the importance of God judging sin. Uh, the, the main benefit or the uh, positive part of Noah's flood is the idea that, you know, sin leads to God's judgment. And uh, so it, uh, it, it, it presents the picture of a powerful God, a righteous God that is not tolerant uh, beyond a certain point of man's um, sin sinfulness, a man's abominations. What's really nice about the Black Sea Flood and Noah's Flood, if we reduce it down to the size of the Black Sea Flood, in other words, uh, um, uh, take the Black Sea Flood as the true account of uh, Noah's Flood. Uh, what's nice is the idea that the punishment would fit the crime. In other words, uh, instead of a God uh, destroying mankind, he uh, punishes a portion of mankind, uh, that portion which was uh, guilty of uh, the, the sinning that was uh, occurring. In other words, instead of having all mankind uh, be, uh, you know, engaged in violence of all kinds and and abominations of all kinds, and uh, decadence of all kinds. Uh, the uh, nice idea is that only, a, uh, like I say, a portion, and uh, they, uh, they were killed off. And so it presents the idea of God not as this, this um, maniacal ogre. So Christians and Jews should be um, happy to find that the flood was not global, it was local, but it was a, a global in the sense, a, a worldly, uh, it was the whole world in the sense that uh, the, these people's um, uh, definition of the world was very limited. Just like it says in, uh, in Genesis that Joseph fed the whole world uh, when he fed, uh, you know, the uh, people in that uh, area uh, that they came to Egypt. He fed uh, the people that could come to Egypt because they had stored up all the grain uh, from the seven good years of harvest, seven good harvests, so that uh, when the seven bad years came, uh, they had enough food for uh, quite an area. Now, this, when it says the whole world, it does not mean the whole world. We have to use a, a common sense. Uh, in a, you know, like Christ said, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. The same thing with uh, Genesis. It was made for man, not man made for Genesis. We have to uh, exercise authority over Genesis uh, and, and take this word world and apply uh, it, uh, limit it, uh, re restrict it to uh, what, would make, what would make sense. It would not make sense for the people of uh, South America to travel on ships to get fed uh, by Joseph in Egypt. That, that's, that's patently uh, absurd. It's, it's, it's insane. So uh, everybody in the whole wide world uh, well, every, every Christian and Jew in the whole world uh, does not uh, take literally uh, where it says the whole world. 
uh, came and was fed by Joseph. He was a savior of the world. He was a type of Christ. He, <laughs> he was a Christ figure. But we have to, uh, 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 you know, restrict the, 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 uh, um, the size of the world that he, he was a savior of. Uh, is this the right time to apply the lessons that are in the book of Acts, chapter 15, uh, to uh, Genesis uh, 5 through 7, uh, which is about the flood? Uh, in the book of Acts, chapter 15, the early church fathers, um, especially Paul, Paul the Apostle, and Peter, and